Hey, hello everybody. We're gonna be doing more wine bottle candles and we're gonna show how to actually make a mason jar candle today. So we'll probably break it up into two videos. Uh, why don't we start with the wine bottle? Uh, you know what, we have the mason jar right here. We have a drill, a quarter inch drill bit in there. What we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna try doing some different kinds of mason jar candles. I'm really curious what kinds of different wicks you can run in this thing. It seems like you can make a mason jar candle out of just about anything. What I have right here is eight inch long piece of um, quarter inch fi round fiberglass wick. Um, some other tools that we're gonna have today. It's a little one ounce HDPE bottle. Uh, I'm gonna use this to help me prime. It's got a nice little flip top cap here and a little squirter on top. So that's gonna make it really easy and I don't make a big mess and I don't waste a lot of fuel. I have, a, <laughs> this is actually a, a stainless tool, stainless steel wax carving tool. It comes in a nice set. There's actually a lot of interesting looking tools in here. They're all made out of stainless steel and I find this really handy for a lot of different things. It's got a couple of different tips. And what I'm gonna use it for is fishing a wick out of an old bottle I made. So what I have here is a wine bottle. Uh, it's a half inch round fiberglass wick. And I wanna say I made this about a year ago. And you can definitely see, I don't know if it's gonna show it or not, it looks wet inside of there, but we're gonna go ahead and prime a little bit. It's been a year since I've used this. I'm even curious if this cork was able to preserve the fuel. Definitely there's liquid in here. I don't know if it's flammable anymore. And we're also going to be using a um, ceramic wine bottle wick. So this is 1 8 inch round fiberglass wick, which I personally by hand thread through the ceramic. I sell these in my store um, and I thread them by hand and you'll, if you buy them, they'll come just looking exactly like this. And we're going to make a wine bottle candle out of this and we're going to compare it to a half inch round fiberglass and see what the flames look like. So let's get started. Uh, I think what I'm also, what I might recommend, these are just some cheap vinyl gloves. Uh, when we get around to handling fuel, I'm gonna wanna use these. So first things first, let's get started. Throw that anywhere. So what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna make some holes in this. I'm gonna make uh, six total because you know me, we like to go big. We're gonna do first one in the middle and we'll do the small candle and then we're gonna go with uh, the massive uh, emergency candle. So here we go. Now if I was smart, I would've got some clamps. Actually, if you're smart, you have a vise and you do this in a vise. But what I'm gonna do so it's not spinning in my hand is you see what I've done here is I have several blocks of wood and I'm only going to go a little bit right through, and this is to prevent me making a hole in the countertop using an additional scrap piece of wood as my holder so I don't lose fingers. I'm going to press down there. Doesn't need to be perfect, we're just making a fun do it yourself candle. You know what? For everybody here, let's give you a nice shot there. Is that easy? Okay, so let's go ahead and I want to put in six total. So we're going to go one, two, three, And you know, looking at how it's actually sticking to the wood with the metal shards. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go grab a piece of sandpaper real quick and I will be right back. And here we come back with some sandpaper. So I'm gonna start, what is this, 40 grit and I'll finish it off with 150. I just need to make it so it's not gonna cut you. 40, that's like rocks on paper basically. Tap off the shards. You know, I'm almost thinking you need to go through this both ways. That kind of 
cleans it up a little bit. Leaves a bit of a mess. Ideally, I would think you'd almost start off with a file. Because if you're not careful, that drill is going to leave some really sharp bits here. You can see that. That's pretty nasty looking. You almost need a metal file, I think. Or a big rock if you don't have a metal file. But if you're patient, you can do it with sandpaper too. doesn't need to be perfect, we're just going to set it on fire. just needs to not cut you. That's a stubborn one right there. There we go. Anyway, let's move on. Doesn't need to be perfect by any stretch of the means, it just needs to not cut you. Alright, clean it up a little bit. You're gonna have a huge mess, you're gonna need to use like a paper towel and clean all this up, but it's been mostly contained on my wood. So when we're done, we'll just tap that off into the trash. Let's get that off out of the way. We're done with all of that work. Okay. Seems like a good surface to work on. Next step is going to be getting our wicks through. Just kind of shove a little bit through and pull. It'll come. And then back it off a little bit. We're going to start this off. We'll do this video tame. We're going to do one. I'm going to leave about a half inch reveal on that. And that's just going to go right in there. And let's see. I'm going to need some fluid. Oh, it's a big tiki torch. There we go. Just pick this up for all of our nice videos we're going to make. Oh, look at that. That's pretty slick. Never used one of these before. It's got a nice little easy easy pour spout and let's air in up there. That's genius. Good job, guys. All right. Easy pour. Let's see if it's actually easy pour. I'm going to make an easy mess. I'm going to be easily smart and bring the jar up to it. Making a little mess. There we go. That'll do it. Oh, look at that. So this stuff's a little different. It's probably going to stink the house up. Get the kids away. At grandpa's for a little while. We'll make some videos. Okay. I don't want to go ahead and... Well, we're going to... We'll slosh it around a little bit. And then I'm going to pour down the top to prime it also. We don't need much. I'm gonna prime it from the top. That'll help. So if you want to speed the process and you want to wait around a while for your wick to get all primed up, you can just start dripping it right down. Look how beautifully that works. It's got this nice little fill spout. So that's a one ounce HDPE bottle right there. That makes a beautiful priming bottle. Just gonna get that sucker nice and soaked. There we go. All right, we're looking good here. Let's clear some spots. We'll do our first test. We'll do our wine bottle later. I just want to do you know me. I love my mason jar candles. This would be perfect for outdoors. This one is citronella scented, and that's a pretty little color, huh? Look at that. All right, so that's all primed. I think we're all soaked. Let's give it a shot, huh? Got my fire extinguisher on hand and access to a lot of water besides. If I was smart, I would have had a lighter on hand. Let's 
get ourselves a little bit closer to the action here. Ooh, I see a little spillage. Anytime you spill any fuel, you gotta mop that up before you set fire. Alright, give it a shot. You guys ready? Here we go. Bam, that's beautiful. Look at that. You can make a mason jar candle out of just about anything. So what we have running right now here is quarter inch round cotton wick in our mason jar candle. It's making a beautiful flame. I'm really curious what the ending flame is going to look like. That's really beautiful. So easy. We'll give it a few seconds to see what it's going to die down to. It actually looks like it's going to have a two or three inch flame. That'll make a great outdoor patio candle. Alright, I'll grab a tape measure real quick. We'll watch the flame, let it die down a little bit, and then I'll do a measure here. We'll see what kind of flame we're producing. Alright, let's go to the tape here. We are looking at approximately a three-quarter inch reveal. Let's verify that. I would say about three-quarter inch reveal. Producing at its tip about a four-inch flame. It's going to set my tape measure on fire. And I would say a good honest two and a half, three inch flame. Regardless, that is a very impressive candle. That's even, that's even more impressive than the uh, what we were able to do with a quarter flat cotton and the eight thermal glass. So this is going to be a, certainly an outdoor version because this is citronella scented. But if you were running the right kind of oil, you could run this indoors too. It's an awfully big flame. You know what? Let's go to the bathroom and see what we can do with this as far as emergency. All right. Wow. Definitely, again, just by itself, one single element would be more than enough to do an emergency bathroom candle or anywhere in the house. This is a very good light. This is similar to when I was running... Uh, six thermal glass wick tubes. Gosh, I'm wondering if this thing's going to be unsafe with six wicks in it. It's going to make a, a foot tall flame. I think the six wick one we're going to have to run in the barbecue. Anyway, definitely enough light to shave by and do your basic bathroom stuff. Let's get out of here before we asphyxiate ourselves. You definitely have to run this with the door open. There's a little bit of smoke off of it. All right, well, let's do the recap here. This works very impressively. Uh, flame's been running for several minutes with no no sign of letting up from the size that it's currently at. This makes a very impressive flame. This would be perfect for the outdoors. Um, so what we have here is a standard mason jar. You could also make this out of any uh, metal metal lidded jar and glass combination. Uh, I drilled a quarter inch hole and I pulled through a piece of quarter inch round fiberglass wick and this is beautiful. Okay, we're gonna wrap it up. Everybody have a good weekend and thanks for tuning in.